Okay, this is example 18 of our differentiation topic. In the previous example, we were looking at how to differentiate an inverse function. We had a look at the kind of theory behind it. We came up with a little rule uh, that the derivative of the inverse function was one over the one over f dash y f prime y, the derivative of f of y. Well, that's good when we're trying to find the derivative of a function, an inverse function that we don't know. For instance, f of x equals sine x here. Now, there's no way that we don't have a standard derivative as yet. We we don't know what it is. It's beyond our kind of range of functions that we can differentiate. So instead of directly trying to differentiate that, we're actually going to focus on its inverse function, f of x equals sine x. And using the process of different differentiating its inverse, we can work out the derivative of the inverse sine of x. So we're going to concentrate on f of x equals sine x. But to think about the inverse function of that, what we have to do is swap around x and y. So the function effectively becomes f of y equals sine y. And the derivative of that, f prime y equals cos y, differentiate that. That's our formula that we kind of worked out in the last example in the theory of it was that the derivative of the inverse function, then the derivative of the inverse function of x, which is going to be the inverse sine of x, is given by 1 over f prime y, which is, in this case, just 1 over cos y. In other words, that's the derivative of the inverse sine of x. Now, it's not quite there because, unfortunately, 1 over cos y is an expression in terms of y and not in x, and we need a function in terms of x. So we have to look back to uh, our function here, which is described by, we're going to change f of y to x equals sine y. And that's kind of all we have to go to connect x and y in our function here. But we know also that there's a connection uh, in the sense that we're dealing in terms of y. Let's do this in another color. We've got a little identity that looks like this. Hopefully you'll remember that. Sine squared y plus cos squared y equals 1. What we want to do is to try and find a way of substituting this. into that okay it, but unfortunately it's not cos y we've got sine y up here so if we think about this relationship here then it's sine squared y plus cos squared y equals one then i can say that cos squared y equals one minus sine squared y and if i take the square root of both sides then cos y equals the square root of 1 minus sine squared y. We already know up here that sine y in our function is the same as x. Sine y equals x. So I can substitute in x for sine squared y, and I get that expression there. So we can say that from our function x equals sine y, that we can rearrange that so that cos y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. We can substitute that in for cos y, and we get square root of 1 minus x squared. So the derivative of the inverse sine of x is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. And I'll just write that down. When f of x equals the inverse sine of x, derivative is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that becomes one of our standard derivatives. We can prove the derivative of the inverse cos of x 
in a very similar way. Inverse tan of x is a wee bit more involved. I'm not going to uh, do these right now. What I want you to do is you know, have a look at that. We'll have a look at then the standard derivatives and we'll go on in examples 19, 20, 21 using the, the standard derivatives that we've got to solve a wee bit more complex differentiation problems. Okay.